Cold Steel Recon 1 versus a Cold Steel SR1 folding lockback field knives, hunting and or field knives. So the SR1 here is on the left. And the Cold Steel Recon 1 will be on the right. It's got kind of a coyote brown, coyote tan, flat earth brown, I think they call it. And then more or less a drab, all drab green. This one's kind of stiffened up. So, you have to pardon me because I'm out on a hike here. And we're getting rain, so I'm hunkered down underneath this big dug fir. You see some glacier lilies back there in the background if, if those are going to turn out. It's kind of cool. Got a reprod patch. Kind of up on a sloping ridge, got a little snow left over. Anyway, so the Recon 1, read off some specs here if I can. About 99 bucks, give or take. You find them a little cheaper in some places. I bought this, uh, I think, I can't remember where I got it now, actually couple of years I've had a couple of years 2017 I think I got it 2018 has the XHP steel on it I do prefer honestly for this knife it's perfect actually it's kind of a good well, I'll get into that but in my experience in my opinion it's a good balance these two steels and these two knives have to pardon me here <laughs> um, so the recon one 99 bucks it's got a blade length of four inches Blade thickness of 1400s off of Blade HQ's website. Uh, CPM S35VN. Or actually, no, this is XHP. Huh. I don't know why I wrote that. Oh, yeah, because the new one. <laughs> I just wrote this down this morning. Um, yeah, so the new ones are XH, or the new ones are S35. This old one is XHP. Uh, flat ground. The old ones, the original Recon 1 XHP I had um, was hollow ground. Man, I missed that knife. But this one's this one's good. Um, so flat ground, handle length of 5.4 inches. Ooh, getting some sunshine finally. Nice. Uh, overall length of 9.4. Weight, 5.3 ounces. Handle thickness. What did I decide it was? It's about a half inch. Maybe just a tad over, maybe just a tad over a half inch. Not quite 9 sixteenths, but somewhere in there. So that's the Recon 1. As far as the SR1 goes here. Uh, about 160 bucks, give or take 10. You could probably find a better deal in some places. The Tontos are actually quite a bit more. I think they're over 200, I think, for the Tonto. Right now, some places. So shop around. You can tell me. Got some pitch on this one. This is actually Larch, a.k.a. Tamarack Pitch. It's kind of hard to get off. It's actually been on there for quite a while. Um, Four-inch blade, again. 1700s for the thickness on the stock there. That'll focus. Uh, flat ground as well, S35, VN still. That'll come in. Not that you can't find this somewhere else, but there we go, Taiwan. Uh, handle length, 5.4 inches, so actually the same as the Recon. Same blade length, same handle length, same overall, actually. So 5.4 inches on the handle, 9.4 overall. 7.3 ounces for the weight, so 2 ounces more. Uh, handle thickness is 6 tenths, so it's a little, it is a little, a little wider. A little heavier, a little wider. Bigger, beefier knife. Okay. So actually, I really, I've done videos on, or these have been in videos before I've put out, but this one, every time, it's both of these knives, you kind of pick it up. You haven't used it for a while, you pick it up like, wow, you know, it's a really, I really like this knife. Very comfortable. Generally, as far as handles go, in my opinion, I don't really like finger finger grooves really on, on knives. I, I, I kind of prefer more of the palm swell, that kind of a shape. It's kind of my preferred. But you know what? As far as that, that recon goes, I mean, it's absolutely fantastic. I couldn't, it fits my hand perfectly. 
like pretty much actually all cold steels. I am a cold steel fan for sure. But actually out of all the cold steel knives I own, uh, very happy with all of them. Because I mean this this handle shape, it's kind of like the um, Code 4, kind of the same, same mode. The uh, Voyagers are a little different, but those are great too. Obviously I've done a video on those, uh, very positive. Um, G10 is great. So that's as far as the ergonomics go. I think it's a great field knife, great hunting knife. Uh, as far as like bushcraft type, woodwork type stuff, um, fantastic. It's thin enough behind the edge that it slices really well. It's durable. It's still fairly thick. The knee, the tip is quite acute, but not overly so. I wouldn't. I'm not. I never really worried too worried about uh, breaking it. As far as the way I use a knife, anyway. Um, yeah, it's just a really good slicer, good blade shape, very tough. It's got the triad lock, back lock, kind of uh, patented by Cold Steel. Andrew Demko, one of their designers. I think generally if you've watched any video with uh, a Cold Steel video, that's been mentioned. The only weakness this knife, particular knife, has, I th in my opinion, and I'm open for... Uh, debate on that but i don't i don't really prefer the the pocket clip it's very tight it's good retention it's kind of hard to put in out of your pockets with one hand depending on the shorts or pants you're wearing um but otherwise it's great and that's a modification i mean i might i've i've, I've come up with some other ideas of kind of countersinking a, a nut in there and then just using a different clip dropping it down to here uh just doing the routing out that g10 but haven't done it yet. Haven't taken this particular knife. I haven't taken apart. Very easy though. Cold steel knives are very easy to take apart and put back together, in my experience. So yeah, I mean you can you don't really need anything more than this. It's a little big for uh, everyday carry. Some people might think it's too big overall. Yeah, you know, three and a half to four inch blade I think is about right as far as a folding field knife goes. Um, you can get away with three inches I'm sure. It's kind of not, I kind of prefer a longer one. Gives you a longer cut when you're cutting things. So, sorry for flicking this thing around. I don't know if it's going to turn out. I do have one good nick in the blade that I'm still working out. Uh, good, it's going to focus a little bit here for me. It's very small. There it is right there. Okay, a couple little nicks. Sorry, hopefully that you cut that while it was still focused. But... So the XHP holds a good edge. It's very easy to sharpen. I mean, I'm not an expert. I've said this many times. I'm not the expert knife sharpener, though I can get them sharp. This one for sure is the one I can get the sharpest and the cleanest edge, the most polished, polished edge. And I just use a sharp maker and then I do a little, a little stropping at the end with the leather belt, uh, the rough side and the smooth side. And this one definitely, I get the sharpest. So this guy, let's get into the SR1 here. Kind of the same idea. It's more burly knife, thicker blade, um, not quite the slicer. Um, I'm not sure what degree of bevel came on it for the secondary for the cutting bevel. I'm thinking it might have been 20 plus, 22 and a half, maybe somewhere between 20, 20 and 25 per side. Uh, what I did, um, and I've been working this out for a while now, is on my sharp maker with medium rods, and then I go through it before I use the knife again. I polish it up with the fine and then do a little stropping, but I basically have it apexed. I wish this would focus a little bit here, but I got it down to a 15, I guess is what my point is. So it makes it a little bit better of a, better on wood, better slicing. It always was sharp, um, but you know, not quite the slicer that Recon 1 is. Um, and I did, I don't know if that's going to turn out there on the flats or actually on that primary primary bevel there. Yeah, it's pretty nicked up. Kind of, I was using a uh, kind of a diamond rod. I was getting lazy, getting tired of using that sharp maker, that just the medium stone to take all that off. But anyway, I got it. I don't know how it's gonna turn out. I'm sorry about that. Down here, the choil, kind of the heel of the blade. Uh, it's not quite down yet. It's pretty much apexed all the way up, except for at the tip and at the heel by the choil. But great. Now, what I've noticed is the difference between at least cold, the way cold steel heat treats, which is great. i got nothing better to say. 
fact, uh, this is an open forum. Anybody can chime in in the comments to uh, kind of share whatever opinion they have or thoughts or knowledge um, that are Cold Steel fans anyway. If you're not, well, that's fine too. XHP, though. I think holds a better edge than the S35, and that's just in my experience, okay? This is the only knife I think I have an S35. This one um, is more prone to kind of chipping, nicking, if you're using it roughly. This guy, no. It might dull quicker, maybe. Um, I kind of maybe noticed that. Uh, maybe, maybe a little harder to sharpen. There we go. Now it's kind of focused for a second. So you can see that I got that pretty much apex down the heel. Anyway... Um, but this is a chopping fool. So it's just two different knives, two different applications. I don't suggest you carry one, but you can kind of, if you had two, you can always take your pick for what you want for the day or for, for whatever your mission is going to be. This one, uh, triad lock, steel full liners. So the, uh, the pivot pin, um, the stop bar, the lock back bar, everything is embedded in that steel liner, fully lined. Yeah, at least along the back there, all the hardware is, is lined. So it's just, just, it's just, you know, it's as strong as the Recon 1. And then, you know, I add quite a few percentage points to that strength-wise. Much thicker blade stock. Definitely thicker out there at the tip. Not quite as cute. Kind of a drop, but kind of a clip at the same time. Maybe a drop clip type of thing. Got that swedge up there. Um, still a good cutter. Definitely not as good of a slicer. I don't know if I've mentioned that. That's probably self-explanatory. Not as good of a slicer, but it'll get jobs done just cutting things, you know. Like if you had this on, on you day to day, you're, you'll be fine. It'll work on wood too now. Um, some kind of, uh, I don't know if it'd be worth it. That'd be cool if this had like a like a hollow grind. Um, maybe at some point if I get some bigger flat stones, I might go ahead and reprofile it and actually thin it out. And actually... Uh, Probably still keep a 15 for the uh, secondary bevel, but the flats, thin those flats out at some point down the road. I don't know if it's necessary because what's cool about this is I've done quite a bit of chopping. Uh, where I live, probably the hardest, nastiest wood is some uh, probably ponderosa pine. So not like I don't have any oak. Uh, when I get down to California, I'll be in the oak. But if I'm out in the oak, uh, I don't like poison oak, so I probably won't be chopping around too much manually anyway. We'll be running the chainsaw on it, but hopefully not chopping stuff down by hand too much because of that. Um, but yeah, so it's like clearing a trail, little snap cuts, um, branches and whatnot, great for that. This blade, like the uh, the blade shape itself and the thickness and the uh, blade material is good for, for chopping, I found kind of clearing trails and i'm not talking about big limbs well it'll do it do bigger limbs um but you know reprod branches just kind of if you find a little game trail or whatever you want to shortcut you can do that without anybody noticing it so it doesn't get beaten down too much of course where i'm at there is no people uh i've seen some elk tracks some deer tracks but no no folks no humans around but Anyway, I always kind of like to hide where I've been, not to encourage anybody to follow. Um, so yeah, kind of two different knives for two different applications, but some crossover similarities. So, I don't know, maybe if you want to own both, you can certainly do that. Um, this is more of your traditional. I got with me too. A new acquisition here, just got it a couple days ago, day or two ago. It's a Buck 110 3 dot. More or less brand new. Been a safe. I think it should be a 1980 because of that three dot. Um, Stand by here one. So I'm kind of showing this. Yeah, it's not gonna come on, baby. This is like the only important thing for f truly focusing. Anyway, it's a three dot. You can. It's got the old f flat handles. It's pretty sweet, actually. There was one I was looking at, but it got bought. It had two pins instead of the three. Kind of a mid 70s knife, so 440C steel. Anyway, I brought this out because, in my opinion, cold steel, unfortunately, they're made in Taiwan, but Taiwan's better in China, in my opinion. And right now, I don't have any problem, definitely don't have any problem supporting Taiwan and the current global situation we're in. Um, but I think cold steel has done a good job of kind of maintaining the classic American kind of a clip point folding lockback knife, right? 
I had another video of that Schrade. What was it? A 25 OT, uh, cool, kind of a classic uh, slip joint, large hunting blade. Um, cool Steel's copied those, but those are designs that like lots of different brands make historically. And depending on what you think of Cold Steel, I did get on Wikipedia and I looked up like Schrade, Schrade USA, uh, Schrade Walden, kind of did a little history searching on those those knife companies, and they were pretty cutthroat. Sounds like back in the day, like. Like one company would go private instead of public, you know, like not allow anybody to share their or buy their stocks because they're worried about uh, hostile takeovers and stuff. So it's always been kind of a cutthroat business. So depending on what you think about Cold Steel, I don't. You know, I think they, they do a proper job of, of maintaining a, a good quality field dive clip point type of a, of a knife. And I mean, that's, you know, that's what I always look for. I mean, that's one of my favorites. This one's pretty much the same idea, kind of more subdued uh kind of design lines which i like too as well um honestly not quite as comfortable of a handle so i know this is this video is just jumping all over the place but you know hopefully i'm making some sense anyway and like i said you know if you watch this and go ahead and throw in your throw it in a comment let me know or let everybody know what you think about it about this uh these two knives i mean because you know they're two of my favorites i don't mind hearing what other people have to say um yeah, so, you know, obviously the, the American classic, or at least one of the American classics, uh, my, one of my favorite blades, like, pretty much, I'm right now, is the way I'm looking at it, is the Recon 1, the Buck 110, and then, like, the Benchmade Auto, you know, AFO 9050, the original 9050, uh, my three favorites, so, it's kind of like what I look for, I get excited about, um, I'll do a video on this, too, because I think I have, like, I think I have four 110s now, all from different decades, well, close. Two 1980s, uh, 90s, and a 2000s, 110s. And I, there are a little some differences. But the cool thing about this one is it does have that original blade steel and original blade grind. So it's quite a bit different than new ones, but still kind of the same idea. Still hollow ground. Yeah. Can't think of anything else what to say. Fortunately, there's no turkeys in my area. I've already hunted this area out Sunday. And uh, didn't see any turkeys, but we do have, there is, there is a cougar, and there's a few bears running around out in here. Definitely cougar tracks I found yesterday. So it's pretty neat. I'm going to enjoy this uh, kind of nasty weather for, for all I can. All right, I hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment if you want. Thank you.